blueberry jam. I didn't plan on making it this late at night, but being since Oklahoma and it's so hot during the day, midnight is the time to make blueberry jam in my house. Anyway, um, this is what I have going on here. Let me turn the camera around and I'll show you. Okay, I have measured out six cups of blueberries and I used my potato masher and mashed them. I've got my lids over here and I've got my jars over here for the uh, water bath. And then I'm going to be using the Sure Gel Premium, it's got a glare on it, the Premium Pectin, pec pectin and that's just extra seals and uh, jar lids. But anyway, I will, uh, <clears throat> first thing I have to do is I'm going to let my lids and jars get to boiling, get the water good and hot, and then I will start preparing my blueberries. What do you do with your blueberries? After you get them mashed, you take your pectin and you add it to it and you heat it up on a very high heat and um, let it come to a full roil and boil. But anyway, hang on just a few minutes and I will be back as soon as the uh, jars and the lids get to boiling. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the burger on and get our blueberries going. Hopefully y'all can hear me. I got the fan on behind the stove and the air conditioner's going, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, I know you can't see me, but I can't seem to aim my camera so you can see me and what I'm doing here too, but I thought I'd be more important to see what I'm doing. I could turn this one off. That'd be a little less noise. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dump my pectin in here. And I did go ahead and add half a teaspoon of butter just so the blueberries don't foam up over the pan too bad, or hopefully at all, because I don't want it on my stove. That would be a big mess. And we had a huge mess last night. Our big old deep freeze over here decided to quit running, and evidently it had been off for a couple days because we started smelling something really, oh my gosh, it was an awful smell. And everything had started melting, and the blood was down in the compressor and of course it was heating up so that smelled really bad i mean if you've ever smelt a dead animal decaying alongside the road then you know how awful it is and inside a closed enclosure of a house oh yeah it was bad but anyway um on to a better subject uh, my husband really likes the blueberry jam that i made I made a batch before and it's already gone. He really, really likes it. So I wanted to make him some before I leave to go to Alaska. I'll be leaving Saturday and I'll be gone for almost a month. And I was going to do two batches, but all my jars are out in the storage shed. So let me see if I can get down here so you all can see me. Um, so I guess I will be doing this again tomorrow. I'll be repeating the process, same process, so I don't have to tell you again. But uh, I'll be going ahead and making another batch. And I also have strawberries, and the blueberries and the strawberries were given to me, by the way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to maybe do a batch of strawberry jam. He likes jelly, but jam is so much easier for me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do a batch of strawberries. Uh, strawberry too. We'll see. Uh, we got some stuff to do before I go. I'm like I said, I'm leaving Saturday. Today's already Tuesday night. So if I don't get it done, then hopefully I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do it when I get back. And either way, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you. But let me put you on hold um, while the blueberries get to boiling. They get um, when they get to a full roiling boil. boil <laughs> Then that's when you add your sugar and you add six cups, which I already have pre-measured out in a bowl. So when it's time, I'll just dump it in there. And it's already starting to boil, so I better start stirring. Anyway, let me put you on pause for just a little bit. Okay, our blueberries have reached a full rolling boil, which is a boil that you can't stir down, I mentioned earlier. So now what we do is we add the sugar in there stir it up real good get that all 
all stirred up in there. And then after that, we will bring it back to a boil and we will let it boil for exactly one minute. And then I will uh, take some jars out of that water over here and set them on the table and uh, put our jam in the jars. And then you put the jars back in the water and you let them set in the water for five to 10 minutes and then uh, you can take them out. And well, I'll just wait a few minutes and I'll show you that step when I get there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, yeah, it's not hard to do. The directions are really easy to follow. And homemade jams and jellies are so much better. Of course, everything's better when you make it at home. I don't care what it is, but yeah. So anyway, let me go ahead and put you back on pause. And when this reaches a full boil, then uh, it will be ready to put in our jars, like I said. And I don't have, unfortunately, there is, let me go ahead and tell you that, there is funnels that fit in the wide mouth jars and the small mouth. I like the wide mouth. And there is also jar things, things that you use to take the jar out of the water. Unfortunately, I don't have those and I'm looking for my tongs so I can get my jars out. I don't even see those. I'm gonna have to find them real quick. But um, just be really careful if you don't have that kind of stuff because this is all very, very hot and it will burn you very, very badly. So if you can get the right tools for the right job, I improvise a lot. A lot of us homesteaders do. So if you're watching this and you're a homesteader, then you probably already know how to improvise. But anyway, let me go ahead and let that come to a full boil, find my tongs, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I found my tongs, and what I did is I had some rubber bands, and I put some rubber bands on the uh, end of it because it has these little slits right there. So hopefully, I'm hoping that it'll hold on to the jars a little better and not be so slippery. So we'll find out in a minute. Okay, I've got my jars over here, and this worked awesome. So if you just have tongs and you don't have the proper jar getter outer thing, get a big heavy duty rubber band and put a big heavy duty rubber band on it. It worked really good. I'm getting the jam over here. And like I said, I do not have a funnel, so I'm going to try to be careful and not get it on the rim and not make too big of a mess. Well, got it on the rim. Have to wipe them all off anyway. But you don't want to fill it all the way to the top. Leave about a quarter inch from the top. And uh, uh, be careful when you do this, like I said, because you do not want to splash it on you. It is very, very hot. But go ahead and fill your jars. Made a mess again. And I have a little one here because I have just a little bit left, but I'm not sure it's all going to fit in there. It's not. So, let me grab another jar. And like I said, I like the wide mouth because this one is a small mouth. And it is just a lot harder to get your contents in there. And uh, there we go. I'm making a mess all over. But I'm good at that. I'm like really, really good at making messes. So yeah. And then I'm just going to use a spatula and get what I can out of the pan. Don't have a wooden spatula, but I used this spatula last time I did it, and it held up, so that's a good thing. So the next thing I want to do is <coughs> get a rag and wipe off the rims, because you want to make sure you have a good seal, and you don't need anything on the rim that will keep your seal from sealing. So just wipe that off really good, and this one here... I'm going to go ahead and try to put in this jar. Here we go. And this one here, I'll just go ahead and put in the sink and 
Uh, I lost my spatula. But anyway, let me go ahead and put you on hold for just a sec. Okay, we got all the rims washed off the jars. Next thing we want to do is put our, ooh, not my camera over, put our seals on the jars, like so. And those are hot because they have been in the water, obviously. Oh, goodness. Ouch. Ouch. All right, and then when you put those on, you want to take and put your uh, rims on. I guess they're, yeah, the rims. And what I do is take a pot holder, put it there, and then just tighten it up just enough that it's snug. And then we'll put it back in the water for, like I said, five or 10 minutes. Okay, what I'm doing is picking this up with a tong, and I'm gonna carry it like this, and then I'm gonna set it back in the water. Okay, and I will do that with all four. Okay, as you can see, I have the jars back in the water, and I'm gonna let them set in the water for 10 minutes. Oh, about eight more minutes actually I got my timer set here and uh, that is all there is to it it's really easy like I said just uh, follow the the recipe on the pectin box and have yourself some delicious jelly or jam whichever you prefer anyway thanks for watching and uh, I hope you all have a great night it is almost midnight but that's why you make jellies and jams in Oklahoma at midnight. It's because it's so daggum hot. And I'm fixing to turn the air conditioner back on. So y'all have a good night, and I'll catch you, catch you later.